Hi guys, it's me, Yaya Diamond, and I have Frederick Buse on the show today. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, I'm glad to be here. Thank you for the invite. Oh, anytime, anytime soon now. Frederick, is. this is not Frederick's first time on this show. He has been on our show before, and if you haven't seen his other interviews, you need to go ahead and go there. I'm going to go ahead and maybe link up some links and put them in the description box. If you're watching on YouTube, you might be seeing it up there, so that way you can get his other books, because he is a proficient author. Yes, he is, and I'm very, very excited to have him back on the show. Thank you so much again for joining us. Well, I'm glad I'm here. Yes, definitely. And you're here about your book. It's called Lifestyles of Backyard Birds and How They Are Affected by Climate Change. Yes. Tell um, me. Tell okay, me well, there, as I said, there are thousands of bird books. Yes. So what is different with this one? Well, it's the accumulation of 20 to 30 years of observation of the birds in my backyard. Mm. Not many people can say they have done that, this observation. No. So oh, there's, a, <laughs> there's a cover, yes. So, okay, what's, what is different here now? What, what's happening to the climate change? Well, with the climate change, the canopy of leaves on the trees is occurring two weeks earlier over 20 years. Mm. 20 years, two weeks earlier. So the leaves are coming out earlier. All right. So what happens? They are producing a shadow on the ground. So the perennials are coming out later. Mm. However, what's happening is that with the climate change, the birds are coming later. And sometimes the perennials, which have the bugs, the bugs are gone by the time they get here. Oh. And so the birds can't produce. And so consequently, due to the climate change and what's happening to the evergreens and the maple trees and the grass and all the other perennials, they're having less young birds. Mm. That's that's one thing that's happening. So the book is split up into two parts. Mm -hmm. What's happening to the general populace of the accumulation of the data? And the last part is the 79 individual birds that I pick out. Okay. Now out of the 79, 12 are gone. They've gone north. They, they don't drop by here anymore. But let's get back to the overall what's happening to the birds. Yes. So in the winter, we're getting more populous, like quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And we're getting more species, account of extra warmth. In the summer, we're getting less popular birds. Population goes down, the species goes down. Mm -hmm. mm. So, so in the book, I show what's happening to the population by graphs, colored graphs, no less. Mm -hmm. But I think that's easier for people to understand. Yeah. And so it shows very vividly what's happening to the population and the species, especially April. That's migration. And the mm -hmm. number of birds I have is almost double, sometimes triple the count of the mi migration. Right. Likewise, in October, the migration comes back the other way, mm. but not as but but not as much, right? Because they take a different path. Mm. And then wow. we have then we have what's happening with the birds themselves at the feeders. They're not very happy. One species does not necessarily like another species. And one of my observations is that cardinals, which everyone says is a nice bird, it's a nasty bird. And when it gets to another bird, it hisses like a cat. I have, I have observed that because I have video uh, sound from my backyard into the kitchen. So that's, that's one thing they do. I observe and I put in the book how they feed. Well, just like humans, they have breakfast about an hour after sunrise. Some come earlier, but basically they have that first hour. Mm -hmm. And then 
they disappear and they come back for lunch. Not all of them, but they have a light lunch. And then an hour before sunset, they come back for dinner. And so I did that in February and August. And okay. the, birds don't, the birds don't care about daylight saving time. They they do no. nothing. They, do, <laughs> they, do no, nothing. They, don't. they don't. No. Oh, my gosh. Wow. And another thing I, I observed is that um, a lot of the males feed the young, not oh. females. Yeah, that's a different... Wow. That's a different observation. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And, and today, uh, we had 99 degrees here. And, and birds don't perspire. They pant. Yeah. They sit, they sit with their mouths gapping and their wings wide open to mm -hmm. try to cool down. And of course, today being 99 here, there were a lot of birds doing that. Wow. Wow. That That is crazy. That is crazy. Yes. So the whole climate is changing. We're not having as many eggs being hatched. Is that what you're saying? Yes. So mm -hmm. what's hap I mean, what what is what is really happening? I mean, are we losing all the bird species? Are we eventually going to I mean, what's going to happen? Well, for one thing, all over the past 20 or 30 years, I've had 12 new species. And I also lost 12 species. Hmm. So it's a you know, gain gain and loss was about the same. Right. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yep. And I also put down how they drink water mm -hmm. because their beaks change size and, and mm -hmm. shape, and so they drink water in a different way. Mm -hmm. And today they were taking a lot of baths. It kind of was so hot. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Continue. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Oh my gosh. So I'm looking at the, no, part of the book. I love this little bird. Is this a bird that you took a picture of? Yes, it is. Aww. That's a hawk. And I, I just love that expression on his face. Aww. I mean, yeah. I know the hawks eat pigeons. Yeah, you know, <laughs> they eat a lot of little birds around here too. Yeah. Yeah, they do. They do. So Okay, so you have you have that book. You you've you've observed in your own backyard all of these things. How has your backyard changed? I know you said you've lost twelve and you gained twelve, but how has it physically changed for you with the bird population that you have in the backyard? Okay, that's a good question, and I show that in the book also. I show when I started out and was hardly any trees or shrubs. And then I show afterwards what happens 30 years later or 40 years later, and how now that the trees have matured, uh, they have put extra shade in areas. Mm -hmm. And of course, they also allow for the undergrowth to grow quicker. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing which happened this spring. We were under a drought for months and months into January, into February. It was a drought, and the birds didn't want to produce. But then all of a sudden, in May and June, we turned up, turned up the faucet and we couldn't shut it off. <laughs> no, we couldn't. <laughs> and the birds love that. And so now we have a lot of young chicks. Mm. But the problem is I have to keep them fed. Oh, you're feeding them? Oh, of course. I feed them every day. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. So what are you feeding the birds? Well, um, I put out different seed for different birds. One is called safflower, mm -hmm. uh, and most of the little birds like that, but fortunately, the squirrels do not like that. <laughs> I put out uh, sunflower, black sunflower. That has a lot of energy, and almost all the birds like that. I put something uh, that looks like a BB called millet, and mm -hmm. a lot of the small birds like that one. Mm -hmm. I put out peanut butter. Mm, peanut butter? Oh, yeah. And they my like birds. My birds in particular, they only like skipping smooth peanut butter. <laughs> oh, they're picky. <laughs> wow. Uh, I also put out whole peanuts. Mm. And they take the birds have a capability of taking two peanuts at a time. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. wow. What can people do? Like, what can we do? Or is there anything that we can do to help, like, curb this? Maybe. I don't know. I mean, what, what do you see we can do? Well, 
one thing I'm, I like to preach is that if a person takes down a tree, they should replace it. Because mm -hmm. we have a lot of old trees and a lot of people cutting down trees in the yard, but I don't see anyone replacing them. And if they do replace them, they should be replaced with native trees mm -hmm. throughout the country. That's one of the big problems. People said, oh, I like that tree, but it wasn't a native tree. And so they, they die after a while. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. What message do you have for the readers when they when they read your book to take away with this this whole environmental change? The, the big, big message is that the population is vastly changing. The species are changing. Mm -hmm. What's happening to the flora is changing. So that's why I said what's happening to the birds due to environment. Yeah. So the people should use native plants, native trees, and if they can, feed the birds. Because a lot of birds don't have the food that they had before. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Definitely. Wow. Wow. Is there anything that we didn't go over today that you would like to say about this? Because to yeah, me, well, you know, if we if we don't have birds, then we don't have the babies and then we don't have pollination. And, then you know, it's just like losing bees. I mean, we can't afford it. this. We can't. You, afford, you can't afford this. You named it. Yeah. But the second half of the book. Is uh, I point out 79 species I've observed in the many years. And where I have had data, I put a, maybe one page, one line is for some birds. Some birds have three pages. And I tell about what they do. Mm -hmm. For instance, uh, the cardinal, which is a pretty good sized bird, comes in the summer. All of a sudden, I would see the cardinal go to the bird feeder, take a piece of peanut, uh, a piece of peanut take it to the water and dunk it in the water and then go feed the young. Mm. Yeah, just like just like you're taking a baby and maybe dunk the food, the coffee or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's the same type of thing. Mm -hmm. the, the other thing that the cardinal does, I was watching and it was coming from its nest to the feeder, but before it got to the feeder, it dropped something that looked like a mothball. What is that? Well, it turns out that it was a feces. They wrapped the feces up in white material that looks like a mothball to, to, to keep their nest clean. Oh, wow. All right. Then the other thing this crazy bird does is crackle, is that I had put down mothballs to keep the squirrels away from the tulips. The crackle goes and gets a mothball, lifts up its wings, and rubs it under its wing to get rid of insects. Okay. Smart. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Smart. Very, yeah. Very smart. Yeah. Wow. Then we have the, then we have the crazy blue jay. But a blue jay, it can be a thief, it can be a policeman, and it can be very shrewd. You fam are you familiar with the blue jay? I am. I mean, I've seen a blue jay. I've, I'm not familiar like you are with a blue jay. No, I am not. <laughs> oh, okay, but, but you know what it looks like. Yes, yes. Okay. Well, this blue jay, one thing it will do, the little birds will come to the feeder in the morning and gobble up what they can. And all of a sudden, they hear a hawk and they fly away. But it's not a hawk. It's a blue jay imitating the call of a hawk. Yeah. So it flies down and gets the rest, <laughs> gets the rest of the feed. Then I'll put peanuts up on a platform, which is about five foot high, and I put some peanuts down on the ground for the squirrels. Well, the blue jay, it's smart. It goes down and eats the peanuts on the ground for the squirrels, and then goes up and eats the peanuts on the platform. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Then. Wow. Then if a crow or a hawk lands in the trees, obviously the little birds don't like that at all. No. And so the blue jay starts to yell. And pretty soon another blue jay starts to yell. <laughs> and then robins start to yell. 
And then grackles start to yell. So pretty soon I have a whole symphony of birds <laughs> yelling, yelling at a hawk or an owl until they leave. Wow. All starts <laughs> off with all Don't starts they off with the don't yeah. they swoop down and attack them? Like I see like hawks in my area come around and I'll see these little birds like comatose yeah. birds like hitting on them and Yeah, I mean, that's right. I mean, wow, they're yep. brave. Yep. So so now I have a whole symphony of birds going after the big one. Yeah. So those are some of the things that I point out in the book. So uh some have a lot of people. Oh, I know. Um I have data showing when when the winter birds will arrive mm -hmm. within a week every year. And they leave every year within the same week. Mm. That's both a junco and a white throated uh, sparrow. Mm -hmm. So these are the kind of things people are going to see in this book, which they would not see in a lot of bird books. Right. These, these kinds of observations in their population, the number of species. A particular species, how their population is changing, who likes who, who's, who's pecking, who's pecking. So <laughs> I, put the, I put down a pecking order. Who's pecking who? Yeah, right on. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes a little bird is more aggressive than a larger bird. I know, I've seen that. I thought they were crazy. I, I thought that's crazy, but that's what they do. So the whole <laughs> emphasis of this book is taking 20 years or 30 years of data mm. and putting it in such a way that a reader can understand what's happening to the birds due to climate change. Definitely, definitely. Wow, wow. Well, I want to thank you so much for being on the show, but most of all, I want to thank you so much for developing such an amazing book and taking the time. I mean, this is like this years, years and years and years and years. Of you. Just yes. yes, definitely. And and right there, you can see the name of the book. But if you don't know what it is, it's lifestyles of backyard birds and how they are affected by climate change. We're gonna put that link in the description. But you can always go to his website, which is frederickbuse.com. It's right there under him and under his name we'll put that in the description box below or above or to the side wherever you may be watching okay <laughs> mr Buse, thank you so much for being on the show i appreciate it so very much good seeing you again yaya and you too and the, you guys don't forget to dare to be different but most of all don't forget to go ahead and support we here we support all of the authors that come on the show and i'm so very happy to have them here thank you again so much and you guys have a wonderful evening or morning, or afternoon, okay. but okay. watch the birds. <laughs> watch the birds. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching.